in the previous session, we saw the graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared. It was a curve like this, a parabola. We just substituted different values in place of x, got respective values for y and plotted the points to get this graph. It touches the x-axis at the origin. That's because when we substitute a 0 in place of x, we get the value of y or the function as 0. Let's try making a few changes to this function. We change the function to f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Make an attempt to draw an approximate graph of this function. When x is 0, y will be equal to 1. 0, 1 will be one of the points on its graph. If you try out more values, you get a parabola like this. Interesting. Now try drawing the approximate graph of this function. When x is 0, y will equal 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. 0 comma minus 1 will be the point. The parabola will look a bit like this. What is the point of all this? All the functions you see here are quadratic. The degree is 2. The graphs are not straight lines because the equations are not linear. What is the general form of a quadratic function? f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the general form where a, b and c can take numerical values. Do you remember how we had calculated the roots of a quadratic equation? The roots will be the value of x for which the function will equal 0. Yes, the roots are minus b plus minus root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Depending on the values of a, b and c, we get the roots of the equation. To know how many roots an equation has, just this value is enough. If positive, then two roots. If zero, then one root. And if negative, then no roots. Look at these functions. They're all quadratic with b equal to zero. So let's see what b squared minus 4ac tells us in each case. In the first function, a is 1, b is 0 and c as well is 0. This will equal 0. It means we have just one root here. And guess what? The function graph also tells us that it has one root. Root is nothing but the value of x as y is 0. Here at this point, the value of the function is 0. Just one root. Let's move on to the second function. b is 0 and a and c are 1 each. This will equal minus 4. Negative value of this means no roots. Does the graph also stay the same? At what value of x is the function equal to 0? Look closely. There is no such value of x at which the function is 0. It has no roots. The third function is interesting. b is 0, a is 1, and c is minus 1. This value equals 4. This is positive and hence it should have two roots. Does the graph say that? Absolutely. The value of f of x is 0 at these two points. They are the two roots of the equation. Remember, to know how many roots an equation has, we just need to look at the value of b squared minus 4ac. 0 then one root, positive, then two roots, and negative, then no roots. Quadratic functions is the favorite topic of the paper setters. You really, really need to understand them well. y is equal to x squared. How does the graph look? Like this. So we know this well. What about y equal to minus x squared? How will its graph look? Simple. It will look like this. If it's the negative of a function, we just invert it. To see how we get this, just try substituting different values in place of x. Okay, good. 
how do we draw the graph of y equal to 10x squared? It will look something like this. You see that when we multiplied x squared by 10, the function's graph narrowed. Be patient, we're getting to the point. The next function is y is equal to minus 10x squared. The minus will just invert the function. It will look like this. Let's summarize all that we saw. If a is positive, by a I mean the coefficient of x squared. If a is positive, the graph always opens upwards as in these two cases where a is positive. And if a is negative, then the graph will open downwards as in these two cases. There's another thing we can derive looking at these graphs. When the absolute value of a increases, the curve gets narrower. 1 became 10 and we saw that the curve got narrower. And we can say that if the absolute value of a reduces, then the curve will get wider. 10 to 1 and the curve got wider. So no matter what quadratic function you face, you should easily be able to draw or interpret its graph. <laughs>